Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad Wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd Ahabatifillah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bless you and your families wherever they may be With peace and security and stability as many of our brothers and sisters in the ummah Don't experience that on a day-to-day basis For example, our brothers and sisters in Afghanistan, especially in those parts inhabited by the Taliban And other places where and uh, Daesh, those other Tekfiri groups that cause fitna and folda and chaos even during the holy month of Ramadan. And likewise, our brothers and sisters in Syria, which doesn't even need us to even speak about all the criminal activity going on there and the evil. And likewise, our brothers and sisters in Iraq and in Fallujah, Fallujah specifically, who are under siege by the Shia and the government forces and the coalition, and at the same time being held hostage by the evil Shayateen from ISIS or ISIL or Daesh or whatever you want to call those Shayateen. So be thankful to Allah for the benefits and the peace and stability that you experience. And likewise, a part of that being thankful to Allah would be for us to be thankful by making dhikr to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala often. And for us to leave off the muharramat. And from that muharramat is speaking ill and cursing and fighting in any of those sinful activities with our tongues or limbs. When Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم من لم يدع قول زور وعمل به والجهل فليس لله حاجة في أن يدع طعامه وشرابه رواه بخاري وأبو داود واللفظه In this hadith of Abi Hurairah radiallahu ta'ala anhu that the messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم said Whoever does not leave off Qawl uh, zur And Zur here, as the Shaykh mentioned, Shaykh uh, Mubarak Furi, Rahmatullah Alayhi, Rahmatin Wasiyah, he mentions uh, a Zur, a Qawl zur here as Kedib, as lying, and Jahl, and leaving off ignorance and acting upon it. Then verily Allah the Almighty has no need for the person who leaves off their food and their drinking. So this shows us Allah, that fasting is not just a thing of leaving off eating and drinking. That we should strive our best to lower our gaze and look at only that which is halal. And we should strive our best to only speak about those things which are halal and those things which are mubah and lawful and those things which we have a hajjah for, that we have a need for, but not to speak about idle talk and being wasteful and especially sinful. So this lets us know what a habitifillah, that no matter how much we have a love for defending the sunnah, that we should not waste our time speaking about others, unless there's a hajjah, unless there's a need to do so. And that means for us as lay people, and thus, and those of us who are beginning students of knowledge, we shouldn't spend our time speaking about this one and that one. And we shouldn't speak our, spend, spend our time cursing this one and that one. And we should definitely not spend our time backbiting this one and that one. And verily, we should spend our time using it for khair. Do your best to speak a good word. Get adjur from Allah Don't lose the benefit and the blessings of the holy month of Ramadan. When Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha qalat kana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yuqabbalu wa huwa sa'im wa yubashiru wa huwa sa'im ولكنه كان أملككم لأربه متفق عليه. In this hadith in Bukhari and Muslim, the hadith of Aisha رضي الله تعالى عنها, the mother of the believers رضي الله تعالى عنها. She said that the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم 
used to kiss while he was fasting, meaning kiss his wives. And he used to touch and massage, so to speak, while he was fasting. However, he was the best from amongst you in controlling himself. So what we learn from this hadith, as the Shaykh mentions, is the permissibility, of course, to kiss during the month of Ramadan while you're fasting. Fast, it's permissible to kiss, no matter what someone says or according to their madhab. But this is from the nas. This comes from the text. And as the, some of the Salaf used to say, there's no la ijtihad muqabla al nas. That there's no uh, striving to gain a ruling at the expense of the text, meaning that the text takes precedence. If there's a text, a clear text, which has a clear hukum, a clear ruling, then there's no read, any reason for a fatwa at that point or to strive to try to make another ruling because the ruling is clear. So here it's very clear that it's permissible for the husband and wife to kiss and that it's permissible while they're fasting. And that it's permissible for the husband and wife also to massage one another or what have you, as long as it is not going to cause, and this is what the Sheikh mentions, that it's not gonna cause your shahwa to rise, meaning that you're gonna become excited and it's going to lead to you maybe having sexual intercourse or it's going to lead to you uh, uh, having a premature ejaculation or ejaculating. So we should strive our best to control ourselves. And that it's best, of course, to leave it off if you know that you're not a person who can control yourself. Otherwise, it is permissible to have this affection with your wife uh, if you are the husband or your, uh, if the woman, of course, is married and with her husband. And those are just some of the benefits that we can gain and some of the rulings uh, with regards to the holy month of Ramadan. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bless us all that w which, which we want, which is good. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless the ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to be united upon kitabi la wa sunnah to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the minhaj or the methodology of the salaf of this ummah. And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala protect us from bid'ah and those from amongst us who practice bid'ah, may Allah bless them to leave off the bid'ah and come to the sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And those from among us who do munkar, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to leave off the munkar and the sinfulness during the holy month of Ramadan and other than the holy month of Ramadan. And those of us who don't have food and don't have shelter and who are experiencing turmoil and uh, difficulty with our rizq. May Allah Azza wa Jal, our razaq, increase your rizq, increase our rizq, and bless us all with ilm and nafia, rizq and tayba, wa amal al-muttaqabbilan, wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad, wa ala alihi wa sahbihi.